In this video, I'm going to talk about strictly about factoring expressions that involve trigonometric expressions like secant and cosecant and things like that. As you can see here, uh, I've got quite a few examples. I'll work through as many as I can as quick as possible. Uh, I'm going to show you a first step that's kind of unnecessary, but maybe it'll help you see what we're trying to do here. The first step that I'm going to show you is I'm going to replace secant squared with the letter u. This is called u substitution in calculus. Um, it's a little bit more advanced, of course. Uh, but the, the point is that we're going to replace secant theta with u. Because if we do that, then you can see that instead of secant, we have secant squared. That would be now u squared minus 1. And the factor u squared minus 1, uh, we see that that's a difference of squares. And a lot of kids that are just starting to factor expressions like this will see u squared minus 1 easier than they will see secant squared minus 1. But they treat them, we treat them the same. Um, that would be that we are going to take then and factor this out as u plus 1, u minus 1. And now that I have that factored completely, I can go and I can replace the u with what I originally put in for it, and that would be the secant theta. So I can actually say that this is the same thing as secant theta plus 1, secant theta minus 1. And that would be a completely factored expression because everything here is to the first power, and that's about as factored as I can get it. So as you can see here, this is really just a difference of squares. We're going to try to do the same thing over here. I'm not going to use the u substitution this time, but it, it, we're going to treat it the same way. See, I have a perfect square here in 1, and I have a perfect square here with cosine squared of x, which means that I can factor this out as 1 plus cosine x, 1 minus cosine of x. And that would be a factored expression for this. And this is going to be helpful later on because when we're solving for that unknown angle, when we're solving for x, or when we're solving for theta, or whatever it is, Typically what we'll do is we'll have this expression like set equal to zero. That would be a typical thing to do. And so then if I say that, hey, look at that. If that's equal to zero down here, that means that my two zeros are located within this. I could say that, okay, then that means secant theta plus one must be equal to zero and secant theta minus one must be equal to zero. And that really gets me set up to solve for what theta is. Same thing over here, right? And that's really what we're going with in the long run. So these are just a few tricks that we can use to help solve for those unknown angles. Okay, down here, let's go ahead and try that u substitution again. Let's say this time that u is going to be equal to tangent theta. And that's going to help us solve this a little bit easier. See, now if I look at this as u is tangent theta, then I really have 4u squared plus u minus 3. And so maybe for us, as Algebra 2 students or pre-calculus students, that's a little bit easier to understand. So what we're going to do then, with this in mind, uh, let's build some crosshairs over here. I need two numbers to multiply to give me 4u squared. And just because I've already done this before, I believe the numbers are actually 1u and 4u. Those two numbers multiply together to give me 4u squared. Over here on the right side of my crosshairs and my bullseye, I'm going to go ahead and put two numbers that multiply to give me a 3. And that's a 1 and a 3. Now the thing that I know is because these are negative, that means that these signs must be opposite each other. One's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. And I know that if I multiply these two values together, I better get, it looks like I did that backwards, I need a 3 and a 1. I need to multiply across 3u times 1 is 3u, 4u times 1 is 4u. I need to be able to add these two terms together and get a positive u out of it. That means that this 3u here must have been negative. So I'm going to change the sign over here. 1u times 3, negative 3 is negative 3u. 4u times 1 is positive 4u. If I add those together, I get a positive u. That's the middle term. That's exactly what I wanted it to be. So that means that my two groups here are factor out to 4u minus 3, 1u plus 1. There's the factored form of that equation. That's probably, if you haven't seen that before, I probably just blew your mind there. Uh, if you're watching this and you haven't been in my classroom, there's a way to factor expressions that have a, some kind of a coefficient in front of the square. Um, I think I have other videos on that. I might, may or may not on my channel already. Point being, I've just factored this. If you've got a way to factor it on your own, that's fantastic. That's an important skill to have. Now I can see then, if I want to do this, that I might as well now go back and replace it with tangent theta, right? Because that's what u is. So this expression factors out to 4 tangent theta minus 3, 1 tangent theta plus 1, and that would be the factor form of the expression. And once again, we'll probably end up in the future setting this equal to 0 and solving. So we can see that, hey, tangent theta is going to end up being 3 fourths over here. 
and tangent theta is going to be negative 1 over here, and I can use the arc tangent function, tangent to the negative 1, to solve for that angle. Same thing over here. Okay, so I've got 2u squared minus 7u plus 6. That would be if u was equal to the cosecant of, uh, not theta, of x. So I can go through and I can solve this. I need the two values that multiply to give me 2u. That's probably going to be 2u and u. Two things that multiply together to give me a 6. Uh, probably going to be a 2 and a 3. Um, looks like it could be that way. This sign tells me that both of those things are going to be the same sign. 3 and the 2 are. And this tells me that they're going to be negative. So I'll probably have a negative 3 and a negative 2 here. If I multiply u times negative 3, I get negative 3u. 2u times a negative 2 gives me a negative 4u. And if I add those together, what do you know? I get negative 7u, which is what I needed to have for the middle term. That means this factors out to u minus 2, 2u minus 3. So now that I have it factored, I'm going to go ahead and put the cosecant x back in. That means that this factors out to cosecant x minus 2, 2 cosecant x minus 3. There we go. These examples down here are basically the same, so I'm going to go ahead and skip them. They're actually a little bit easier because there's nothing in front of the, uh, there's nothing, oh, you know what? No, they're a little bit different because I have two different functions. That means I can't really use the, the, uh, the use substitution thing like I've been doing so far. I've got an extra step. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and cut off this video. I will resume this in the next example, which would be part, I believe, part six of how to factor expressions.